Hey guys, Thunder E here and welcome to another gaming video. Now, this is the first gaming video on a Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 device. And this is the iQ 12. Now the iQ 12 is powered by the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 and it comes with a ton of features that I think a lot of people will like. And we get to see what that performance for Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 looks like. Now, before we get there, don't forget to smash the subscribe button and notification icon if you want to watch more videos like this on the channel. So what do we have here with this device? Now the iQ12, uh, we have the BMW Motorsports Edition with the BMW branding across the box itself. And also some, um, you know, BMW branding around the packaging, which is pretty nice and pretty cool. Uh, the device itself, it's all white. We have the BMW colors on there, it says iQ12. It's got some impressive camera specs on here. It's got 100X zoom uh, in terms of the cameras. We do have uh, rear cameras that are 50 megapixels, uh, as well as also 50 megapixels wide angle and a 64 megapixel 3X periscopic zoom. So we've got three lenses here that should do some pretty decent work on there. So I can't wait to see what kind of performance we're getting internally. This is also coupled with a 5,000 milliamp battery and a display that's 6.78 inches, 144 hertz, uh, and it has a uh, maximum nit brightness of 3,000 nits. It's a pretty bright display, very good display, LTPO display as well. So you've got, of course, uh, variable refresh rates when we're looking at here in terms of performance. And it has a 120 watt charger. Now, let's go in and see what that Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 does with the iQ12 in terms of gaming performance. Uh, but first off, we have to look at Geekbench and 3D Mark V. So our 3D Wildlife Extreme uh, benchmark scores, we've got about 5,135, which is pretty good. Uh, average uh, FPS of about 30 frames per second and performed really well. It says our scores are up to the 97th percentile in terms of performance. What's really interesting is also the battery temperatures during this performance test was between 25 to 26 degrees Celsius and battery dropped from 40 to 39. So battery performance was also pretty good on this test, which is pretty good to see here. Now, a lot of you are looking for those Geek benchmark scores. Uh, this is quite interesting here for our um, single core, multi-core multi scores. We've got some really high numbers. Uh, single core, 2,314. Multi-core, 7,170, which is pretty nice. But when we compare that to something like a Galaxy S23 Ultra, which that customized a Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chipset, uh, you can see it clearly beats it with the uh, the Galaxy at 5,269 for multi-core, 1,176 for single core. So there is a huge performance jump here uh, for these devices in terms of single core and multi-core uh, performance numbers. And then when we go into GPU numbers, there is a huge leap here in OpenGL CL scores with 14,291 on the uh, IQ12 while the Galaxy has 9,225. 9, so it clearly shows us that the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 has a huge graphical performance leap. So what does that look like in terms of gaming? So we start off with our very first game, which is Call of Duty Mobile, which is our usual standard benchmark. Now, something I will note is that none of my benchmark tools currently work for these devices because they are brand new and this is the first time we're seeing the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. But that even being said, I was able to see what the refresh rate was on screen while playing using the developer tools built into Android 14, which the device is running. And playing Call of Duty, I was getting 120 uh, hertz there, uh, basically getting close to 120 frames per second, which is pretty good, meaning gaming performance is fast and vibrant, and also the performance runs really well. Then moving over to PUBG Mobile and playing at Extreme HDR, um, I was getting some really solid performance. It fluctuated between uh, 60 frames and going all the way up to 120. So you can see that the uh, refresh rate is going up and down, which means that at least our game performance should be between 60 to 120 frames per second, which was great to see. And then when we played, of course, at um, Ultra HD Ultra, we're getting between 40 to 60 frames per second there as well. Again, none of these games are optimized, but that was good to see. So I was able to play Genshin Impact and I played for about 25 minutes 
and my refresh rate stayed at 144 hertz, which is the maximum of this display. I'm not saying it ran at 144, but that's what I was getting in terms of refresh rate. So that was a very good sign. But the better sign here was actually the temperature readings in within that 20 minutes time span. We stayed at 93 degrees Fahrenheit, roughly around 31 to about 32 degrees Celsius. So that was pretty good to see here. Now, doesn't mean that those temperatures will run hotter later on if you're playing up to an hour, but at least in that time frame that I got to play, I got some really good temperatures from this device and really shows where the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 actually lands, which is pretty good to see. Now, other aspects of this device that we should definitely take a look at, of course, are the speakers. How well do they sound while gaming, watching audio and listening to music? So let's take a good listen. Soundbars, this will not work with a Sonos or any other soundbar, which you would have to. Sounds pretty good. I think uh, IQ has done a really good job with the speakers on this device. They sound clean and clear, especially during that gaming uh, session, as well as also doing uh, just content watching and enjoying the use of your phone. Now, overall here with the IQ 12, you've got a device that packs in a brand new processor that seems to be delivering quite well on the gaming performance there. Uh, now, you do have some really great uh, gaming tools as well uh, with its uh, game center, which allows you to go in and see your CPU, GPU usage. Uh, of course, go into the highest uh, performance mode, which is called Monster. You've got other tools that you can use to maximize your uh, gaming experience here with control settings, uh, off-screen display, blocking notification, things like that. There is no on-screen FPS tool, uh, which would have been really useful here. But again, it's still a nice tool to have, so hopefully they can add that in the future. Uh, but the overall performance of this device while gaming and showcasing the Snapdragon 8 uh, Gen 3 is truly impressive. You've got a mixture of a lovely display with a high nit ratio, uh, a processor that works really well and you can see the huge leap in gaming performance and also some really great battery with uh, 5,000 milliamp battery. And the addition of the 120 watt charger where I was able to go from 20% to 50 in on, in the roughly about five minutes or so. So that's actually good to see here with this device. So if you guys have any questions, or any comments about the IQ12 or the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, in terms of performance and what this brings to gaming, let me know. Otherwise, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and always enjoy your entertainment.